this is Dodger, and you are watching the extended version of the interview with Kelly Santiago from That Game Company. If you did not see the first part, you should go ahead and click on the Stormtrooper yeah. flower arrangement. Otherwise, you won't make any sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> Except for just being generally awesome <laughs> that it even exists at all. So the question that I wanted to ask because we were talking about Journey mm -hmm. is that I read in an article that it's supposed to be a, a multiplayer experience. And from the, from the trailer, you you definitely get the the sense of wonder but how how does the multiplayer work into that or can can you talk about that? yeah that yeah okay? <laughs> so yeah when actually when we released the trailer we were um also doing a press event um with sony in new york that we got to talk more about the online experience mm -hmm. um and so how i kind of see it is that the i think in flow and flower um the, the development team was really uh trying to create games that question the definition of what a video game is, sort of that assumption that people make when you think of a video game. Um, and the, a lot of people immediately come to mind with really more like action or shooter games. And that's not the only kind of game that we think should or can exist. Yeah. Um, with Journey, I think they're really taking the same approach, but with an online experience. Um, so when I say online game, I think a lot of people assume um, a certain amount of competition or co-op or a lobby system, connection systems, right, communi sure. certain basic communication systems. And they've really um, stripped all those away and said, what can we sort of make a different kind of online experience that doesn't have any of those things? So uh, in Journey, all of the elements of, of online play are embedded in the game ex itself. Um, the developers are really protecting the integrity of that that gameplay experience when you're in the environment. And so when you are wandering around, you can happen upon someone else who looks kind of like you. And that is another player who's also playing in their own journey. Right. Um, you can choose to travel together. Um, you could choose to create games among, amongst yourself if you like. If you want to race <laughs> to the end of the level or whatever. Right. Um, similar to Flow and Flower, there's not a lot of explicit goals um, mm. given to you. And so you're left to create your own experience. Now, if you decide you don't want to play with that person, you're just not on the same page as you, right. then you just walk away from them. It's sort of like hiking is sometimes how we describe it. Mm -hmm. And you'll be disconnected from them and left with the opportunity to connect to someone else. Awesome. So is, is Journey more of an, an open world game? Like you don't have to follow like a specific path. You can just kind of be wherever you want to it's be. It's a good question. Then, there still is um, a strong element of that linear narrative that I think um, fans of Flower will recognize. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been a big challenge for the team to allow players to um, have more of a sense of self-guided exploration and discovery mm -hmm. while still leading them on a, an emotional uh, journey that, that they want to take, take the players on. Right. I think that it's so cool that that your company is is really attempting to push the boundaries of all of this because that's the only way that the medium will grow. I know that a lot of the traction for for video games as art happened when when Ebert started like really railing on it. I love how this is starting to look. <laughs> I, I'm I keep like well, looking at it like and being it. like, this is just so fantastic. <laughs> um, so, do you, do you think that that Ebert's pessimism has really just given a lot of strength to the community, to the gaming community in general? Yeah, and he's such a public figure, mm -hmm. you know, I think that really um, is why it became sort of a call to action for many for many gamers. Mm -hmm. I think what was also really cool was uh, something that I think he even mentioned at one point during the whole back and forth we were having, <laughs> um, which was that it wasn't just that gamers were coming to his site or, or messaging to him through his Twitter account, uh, about how much they love games and how much he sucked or something like that. <laughs> they were really coming with um, their own uh, very considerate and contemplative and thoughtful responses to how games have been meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. And it's not really uh, fair to kind of poop all over a medium you <laughs> haven't really participated in since he admitted that right. he didn't really play video games. Um, so I thought that that aspect of it in particular was really great and really exciting mm -hmm. um, as far as seeing not only the evolution of the medium, but kind of the evolution of gamers themselves. Breaking the connotations that have to do with yeah, people yeah. who play video a games. A lot of people yeah. disregard not only video games, but the people who play them as well. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and this is not cool anymore, like, because <laughs> we pretty much all do, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you, do you guys have a lot of, like, possible ideas floating around right now, or are you really just focusing on Journey? Um, I would say it's a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, it's really mainly our development, uh, all of our development focus is on Journey itself, mm -hmm. but um, I certainly think uh, you can't stop creative people from being creative. So we really right. try to promote a culture at that game company in which um, our developers can uh, you know, freely uh, work work on other ideas or inspirations or hobbies um, that give them inspiration. Because I yeah. think that always makes the work that they do on the the project that we're working on at any given time much better. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like any big hobbies like besides like besides the the whole like video game thing and, and being kind <laughs> of an advocate for that? Is there anything like do you have anything else that's that? really allows you to to express yourself creatively? Well, it's funny because I would say right now my biggest hobby is um, is Indie Fund, which is <laughs> kind of another company that does something similar. Awesome. <laughs> so I guess it's uh, it's just really what I'm passionate about. And so yeah, I joined, um, for anyone that does, isn't familiar with Indie Fund, but a number of other independent developers, um, such as 2D Boy, so Ron mm -hmm. Carmel and Kyle Gabler, Jonathan Blow, uh, the developer of Braid and um, I and love a, Braid. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> and uh, and a num number of other uh, indie developers uh, who pull pull together our resources to manage um, kind of an angel investment fund in which we try and find new up and coming independent voices uh, that are creating games um, that are off the mainstream a little bit. I think that are sure. sort of pushing the boundaries, again, of, of video games and uh, and trying to help them fund their first project so that they can start in a great place to become financially independent. I love that you're so passionate about video games. That's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So as a final question, what is your favorite color? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the hardest questions I think you've asked. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say it cha uh, changes depending on the day, but I would say the other day I was at the grocery store and it's just pouring down rain here right. in Los Angeles and this there was this car that was this bright, bright purple, like like maybe this <laughs> kind of purple, and it was just beautiful. It was just like brightening up the entire parking lot. Right. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. And it had a giant Hello Kitty sticker in the background <laughs> and then the back of it, which was pretty awesome. But. <laughs> I, I feel ya. I can, I can definitely get on board with that. Alright, well thank you so much for coming. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Dodge This. Rate, comment, subscribe. And if you would like to see that game company's website and their Twitter, there will be links below. So thank you again for coming. It's thank awesome. You. And if you would like to see other episodes of Dodge This, go ahead and click the link. Bye-bye.